that most of the hands we'll deal with in this lesson will be about reversing for the opening bidder. Now, first thing we need to do uh, is discuss the importance of what we call reverse bids. I've heard a lot of players say that they don't play reverse bids. Now, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Reverse bidding is part of the basics of bridge. And uh, uh, if, it's, if it's the basics of bridge, then that's something that you need to learn just as, as much as you need to learn uh, how to, what points you show when re you rebid one no trump or jump to two no trump. Reverses are something that you must play. Now, let's look at, let's look at the reverses and let's look at uh, uh, what defines a reverse. So for example, let's split uh, the five four shaped hands, let's split them into what we call a, a high five four and a low five four. I'll show you in a moment what I mean by a high five four and a low five four, but it essentially means that if the five card suit is lower ranking, it's possible in order to show both of your suits that you may need to reverse. If the five card suit is higher ranking, then reversing values or high card points are not necessary. So let me just, I'll, I'll draw you an example of what I mean by a high five, five four and a low five four. This everyone would be a high five four. Five card half suit, let's say, four card diamond suit and two small clubs. Everyone, that would be an example of a high five four. Why? The higher ranking suit here, the hearts, yeah, that is the five card suit. Now, if we were to change that slightly, yeah, take one of the hearts away and move it into the diamond suit, that is what we would refer to as a low 5-4. So reverses are all to do with low 5-4s. So let's look at the importance of reverses, what they mean, what you are re uh, required to have when you make a reverse. And first of all, let's define what exactly constitutes a reverse in an auction. So rub this out. And let's look at an auction. So the first thing I need to get out of the road is uh, that you have to recognize that uh, if you have essentially a balanced shape that is a 4432, where you have two four card suits, then this is a hand that you're not allowed to reverse on. Yeah. So for example, if an auction uh, or if a hand came up such as this, king to four, a king doubleton, king to four, ace queen to four, and three small. If you picked up this hand, you'd start the bidding with one diamond. If partner responded one spade, you would be unable to show your heart suit. Why? Because any bid that occurs above one no trump by the opener on their second call. Any bid that occurs above one no trump shows a 5-4 pattern. So if your second bid, with the exception of a raise of the spade suit, so a two spade bid here wouldn't be showing a 5-4, a two spade bid here could be made on a, an unbalanced, pardon me, on a balanced hand, but most certainly a bid of two hearts here, that everyone is a bid above one no trump by the opener on their second call, which means that that hand must hold an unbalanced shape. And an unbalanced shape means that, of course, you would have started by bidding your five card uh, suit first, and that is the diamond suit. So this auction here would show five diamonds and four hearts. If that's the case, what auction should have occurred uh, with the hand that's shown here? With the hand that's shown here, this hand would open a diamond. If partner bids a spade, you have to ignore your heart suit, of course, and simply bid one no trump. So again, I'll reiterate, any bid that occurs above one no trump at the opener's second call means that the opener is unbalanced. Let's rub that out. Now, it's the order in which you bid those suits that defines whether or not you actually have a reverse bid. If an auction did proceed, one diamond, one spade, two hearts, the opener 
on their second call has bidden beyond the barrier of their first bid suit. And that is, they've bidden beyond two diamonds. So if they've bid beyond two diamonds in a new suit, that everyone constitutes a reverse. Let's have a look at a non-reverse option. Let's reverse the suits, one diamond, one spade, two clubs. That everyone has not gone beyond two diamonds. If it hasn't gone beyond two diamonds, then that doesn't constitute a reverse. It doesn't mean that you can't have 16 or more points to make this bid here, but it means that it's not a reverse and partner won't be expecting those values. Now, let's look at high card points required to reverse. So in this option here that we've written, the high card points here for a reverse are 16 or more high card points. Yep. It promises five or more cards in your first bid suit, which is diamonds, four or more cards in your second bid suit, which is hearts. So instantly, it's just as important for the responder to recognize a reverse as it is for the opener to remember to make a reverse or, or to remember that the bid that they make promises a reverse or shows a reverse. Now, why do you need 16 plus points? Well, let's have a look at two different options. Let's have a look at an option where the suits are in the reversing order, such as this. If the opener is going to show preference, and remember the opener's promised nothing more than six high card points here. If the opener is going to show preference on this hand, then they need to show preference probably to the longer suit. And the longer suit here is the diamonds because that's promised five cards. So if the responder, if the responder is going to show preference to the longer suit, then the responder will need to bid three diamonds. And that three diamond bid here has sort of artificially pushed your partnership up to the three level. Now that means that one of you needs to have extra values in order to be able to uh, readily expect to make your contract. Compare that to an option without where uh, the opener is not reversing. One heart, one spade, two diamonds. This is a hand where the opener hasn't reversed so they're not promising 16 plus points. If the responder wished to give preference or false preference to the opener's longest suit, the longest suit is hearts, second longest suit is diamonds, they could, they could give preference uh, at the two level. So they can actually bid two hearts. And you can see what happens here is, is that because of the reverse, we have essentially pushed the level of the option up to the three level. So that's why with reverse hand or reverse options, we need to hold at least 16 or more high card points. Okay, so now that we've defined what a reverse is, let's look at some example hands. And let's go through uh, the, let's go through this bit by bit. Okay. Openers reverse, and that's what we're discussing on these hands. The reverse is 100% forcing, and this is actually important, everyone. It's important that it's 100% forcing. Let's spotlight the area where I'm, I'm discussing here. So this, a reverse is 100% forcing. It means that if the responder has responded with only six points, you cannot pass the opener's second call. Why? Because while it's a minimum of 16 points, it's all the way up to 20 or 21 points, a hand that they deem not good enough to open at the two level. So let's look at some example hands here and work out whether uh, we have shown a reverse or not. Example number one here. You've opened a club. Partner has responded either one diamond or one heart. Let's say it's one heart. You're bidding one spade. Now, have we passed uh, the barrier of the club suit, meaning at the two level? Have we passed two clubs with our second bid? No, we haven't. If that's the case, then uh, this, this option, one club followed by one spade, is not a reverse. Let's look at example number two. Again, uh, we, we have to decide whether we're going to open, uh, uh, when we open one diamond, what we're going to rebid. So here we have opened one diamond. Partner bid either one spade or one no trump. Let's say they bid one spade. And on your second bid, 
uh, if you're going to call your heart suit, you'll need to go above two diamonds. So on the second bid, we would be required to bid two hearts. Now, we need to stop. Do we have, uh, that would be a reverse. So do we have what is required? Do we have five cards in the first suit? Tick. Do we have four cards in the second suit? Tick. Do we have 16 or more points? Yes, we do. Therefore, we can reverse on this hand. So just checking the option, the option would go on example two, one diamond, one spade, two hearts. And that would promise, because it's a reverse, that would promise 16 or more high card points. Okay, let's keep going. Let's have a look at example number three. In example three here, you've opened uh, one club and your partner has responded one diamond. Now, whilst you do have the values to reverse, so you, you could bid two hearts on this hand because you do have 16 plus points. There's no need to bid two hearts. You don't have to jump to two hearts to show your values. In fact, a jump to two hearts would be exactly that, a jump shift. A jump shift for some players would be 19 or more points. So on this particular hand, what you do on example three is you simply over one diamond, you bid one heart. Okay, let's move along. What if the opener doesn't have the high card points uh, with which to reverse, but they do actually have the shape with which they may want to reverse? Let me just move this chat box up here. So example number four here, you're the opener, you start with a club and partner bids one spade. Now, whilst we'd, may, uh, we'd like to bid two hearts to show our five clubs and four hearts, because remember, if we bypass one no trump, we instantly must be unbalanced and unbalanced is in the form of either a six card suit or a five four. And he's just asked me a, a question here. Uh, example two, if you have four diamonds and four hearts in the same point count, can you still reverse? Well, if you had, let's go back to the example. So uh, here, so let's say uh, the three of diamonds was the three of spades. So we simply had four, four in the red suits. With four, four in the red suits and 17, 16 points, we would actually be, should be opening one no trump. So reverses are very clear. Reverses are unbalanced hands. They must be unbalanced hands. And I've been asked to explain uh, example number three again. So with example three here, you've started with a club and partner has bid one diamond. You're a, you, have, you would have had the values to bid two hearts if partner had responded one spade. So, but they didn't, they bid one diamond, allowing you to bid one heart. One heart. Does that mean that you need to jump to two hearts to show your hand? No. If the option had gone on example number three, one club, one diamond, two hearts, that's a jump. And jumps in most people's systems are 19 or more high card points. So uh, you wouldn't make that. Some people may play that jump as something else that's a little bit fancy, but in a lot of people's systems, a jump shift here to two hearts would be 19 plus points. So with the hand in question that you have on example number three here, uh, you wouldn't choose that because you don't have the 19 points. So therefore, you would only respond or rebid one heart. That then means that you don't need uh, anything more than 12 points, 12 or more. But remember, it's 12 or more. Yes, it's still at the one level partner will almost certainly bid again. So you'll get to show your values later on in the auction. Let's move that screen away. And let's go back to these examples four and five. Examples four and five. You've started with uh, uh, one club. I've got another question here from Helen, which I will answer in just a second because we have some examples with six fives later on in the lesson. So here we start with one club. My partner bids one spade. I'd love to bid two hearts, but I've only got 12 high card points. Whilst two hearts promises the four hearts and five clubs, it, it uh, defies uh, the need uh, of the 16 points. So you can't do that. You can't bid two hearts in this hand. So we have to manufacture another bid. We have to treat this hand either 
like some sort of balanced hand, 5422, that's possible. But the thing that worries me about the fight bidding uh, one no trump on this hand is that I've got two small diamonds. I think I'd much prefer to bid two clubs on my decent five card suit, king, queen to five, than to rebid one no trump. So uh, when you don't have the values to reverse, you need to manufacture a call that is close enough to uh, the hand that you're actually holding. Example number five here. Again, you've got the shape to reverse because you have a low five four. Low five fours are when the lower ranking suit is five and the higher ranking suit is four. But you do have uh, the shape to reverse, but you've only got 12 high card points. So in your mind, before you start the auction, you should say, okay, what am I going to do when partner makes the expected response of one spade? And sure enough, you open a diamond and partner does make the expected response of one spade. And you have to think, what will I rebid? Two diamonds is a possibility, but I've got the club suits, the suit reasonably covered. I've got the heart suit covered and partners bid one spade. I think a hand like this, I'm gonna tell a small fib and rebid one no trump. Okay, so one no trump, partner will probably think I'm four, four, three, two or four, uh, uh, four, triple three. Uh, but occasionally you can do this when partner has responded in the suit where you hold the singleton. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask a question. Someone can type the answer for me uh, whilst we go along. If the clubs and the spades were reversed, and I'll pop this example on the board. Someone type the answer for me. If the clubs and the spades were reversed, if this was the hand we had, queen, jack, Another, king, queen to four, king, jack to five, and a singleton club. If we started off by bidding a diamond on this hand, if partner was to bid one spade, you have the same shape that I suggested for a one no trump bid, but this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, what would be your choice? So I'll leave that there for the second, and if someone would like to um, get back to me, Ruth said she'd like to bid two clubs on the hand. I think that's an option, Ruth, yes. Uh, Tony suggested two spades, Helen two spades, yep. Now, some people are probably nervous about the two spade bid, but I think it's actually a very good call. And the reason I think it's a good call is because uh, often partner will have five cards and spades as responder and not be able to rebid. Sorry, Ruth, good, you've changed that to two spades. I think that's good. Uh, <laughs> I'm convincing, am I? Um, uh, often partner won't be able to rebid their five card suit. And the wonderful thing about raising partners major, even with only three cards, and I will give a lesson about this coming up, is that it puts partner in the picture of the hand that you have. And the picture being that you may have only three card support, but uh, it means that their major suit is something of value in the hand. And often they can, uh, they can assess their hand accordingly. They think, oh, well, partner's now got a fit for me. Okay, they may not have four card support. It could be three because they've only raised to the two level. And that would be my choice, everyone. Yes, two spades, lovely. So let's rub that out. Let's move on. And now let's, let's discuss some hands for the responder. So let's talk about uh, what does responder do once partner has reversed? Now, Everyone, it's very, very important for a responder, once partner's reversed, to first of all, recognize the reverse. So it's not only a question in partnership of the player who's reversing being able to, to recognize the reverse, it's also up to the responder to recognize the reverse. So let's look at example six here. Partners open the bidding with the diamond, and you have responded one spade. Partner's next bid is two hearts. Well, that's above the barrier of two diamonds, isn't it? Which means that that is a reverse. If it's a reverse, it's promising five cards in diamonds, four or more cards in hearts, and 16 or more points. With your nine hard card points here, everyone, that means you have sufficient values, especially with a hard fit now and a couple of doubletons, sufficient values for game. So don't just bid three hearts on this hand, everyone. 
a three heart bid actually would be non-forcing. So a three heart bid here would say to partner, partner, I have something like about, uh, you know, six or seven points only. I don't have enough opposite 16 from you to raise all the way to game. I've only got uh, a minimum hand for my response. But remember, the reverse bit of two hearts is forcing. With six or seven points, you can't pass because that 16 the partners respond, uh, uh, partners promise for their first rebid, uh, could easily be 19 or 20 points. So never pass a reverse, everyone. On this hand, you'd bid four hearts if you were, if you had the ace of spades less. So I'll give you an example hand. If this was your hand as responder, jack to six, to five, king, queen to four, too small, too small. After a uh, partner opens a diamond, you bid a spade. If partner was going to bid two hearts on this hand, uh, I've got six points plus, let's change that queen of hearts, let's make it into a, a jack, hey? It's not getting any dissension here. So if we've got that hand over two hearts, I would simply raise to three hearts. And that says to partner, partner, I'm only minimum. I don't have enough points opposite your 16 to squeeze out a four heart bid. So again, we'll pass that hand, we'll pop that out. And move on to the next one. Okay, example number seven here. Example seven, partner opens a diamond, you bid one spade, you don't have uh, sufficient values to bid your clubs uh, and partner reverses into two hearts. So diamonds are the barrier, partner's second bid has two hearts that's above the barrier of two diamonds, which makes it a reverse, five diamonds, four hearts. Well, 16 points, five diamonds, four hearts, doesn't look like a red suit contract is likely to be good, but you've got uh, nine high card points and good stoppers in both of the unbid suits. Everyone, don't bid two no trump here. Again, two no trump would be a weaker option. That would be showing a minimum hand. Jump to three no trump and partner knows that you've got sufficient values for game and no uh, immediate fit or no interest fit really in either of their suits. So they've got the red suits covered, you've got the black suits covered, sufficient values. Look at example eight here. Example eight. Uh, partner again opens a club, you bid one spade, and partner bids two hearts. That's above the barrier of two clubs, which means in a new suit, it means that partner must be reversing. So they've got five clubs, four hearts, uh, and you here are looking at your spade suit thinking, this needs to be bid again. If you bid two spades, that's a minimum bid, promising a minimum hand you know, somewhere around about five to seven points maximum. If you've got this hand with 10 points, you need to go to game. So let's show partner extra values by jumping to three spades. So if partner reverses and you jump in response, that says to partner, partner, we're going to game. Yeah, it says six spade card spade suit and we're going to game. Let's look at example nine here, everyone. Now this is the one of those examples where you know the game is on, but you don't know what is going to be the best game. Partner opens one club, you respond one heart, partner rebids two diamonds. Again, it's above the barrier of partner's first bid suit, which was clubs. The barrier meaning two club bid, it's above two clubs, so therefore it is a reverse, promising five or more clubs, four or more diamonds, 16 or more points. Well, we're going to game, but Hearts is still a possibility as a contract here, isn't it? Partner could have three hearts to go with their five, four, and the other two suits. Three no trump could be the right spot as well. Yeah? Even five clubs. That could be the right spot because partner's shown you five of them there. I mean, why give up on five clubs? We might make six clubs. So let's elicit more information from partner. And you may remember that from the lesson the other day on fourth suit forcing. Fourth suit forcing sets up a game force. You bid two spades here and it says to partner, partner, we're going uh, to game. I'll just bring the page up a little bit so that everyone can see page nine there. Thanks, Jane. Uh, so you can see example nine, the one that I'm referring to. Our partner uh, has promised 16 plus. You would bid two spades, which is fourth suit forcing. 
Let's go uh, through a few possible options that could happen from here. Uh, partner open to club, yeah, you bid a heart, partner bid two diamonds, you bid two spades. Now, if partner was to bid two no trump, you would raise to three no trump because partner would have a stopper in the fourth suit here. Yeah, that's what two no trump promises after a fourth suit forcing bid. Let's say two no, uh, two no trump wasn't partner's choice. Let's say partner's choice was after your two spade, partner's choice was three hearts. Well, that's lovely. That means the partner has a five, four, three, one with a singleton spade, or well, definitely good enough to go to game. In fact, you know, you might even be able to persuade me to go to slam on this hand. Now partner has shown on this option, five, four, three, and probably a singleton spade. I like to call that uh, layering an option or, or painting a picture. Bidding is a lot about that. Not only is it a language of communication between you and partner, it's also, it's like filling in, uh, imagine uh, those paintings that we give to children where there's 13 spaces and you have to put a color in each one of the spaces. Imagine that, you know, one, of the, one color, green is for the spades and red for the hearts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, once you start filling in the spaces, you can work out exactly what color must be in the last space. So in this instance, the color in the last space of spades would be a singleton spade. So that's why I was suggesting that perhaps with the hand that we've got in example nine, slam may be a possibility. Now let's look at um, one other option. And that is you choose to bid two spades again, fourth suit forcing, and partner says three clubs. Now, when partner bids three clubs, the one thing that we're going to know about this hand is that they don't have a hand where um, they have a, uh, a five card club suit and a spade stopper. Uh, they won't bid that because they would have bid two no trump with a spade stopper here. If this auction had occurred, I think probably we'd be heading towards a, a club contract. So I think my next bid might be five clubs to say, I'm just a minimum here, partner. I've heard you say that uh, spades, uh, you, can't, you don't have stops. So I don't have spades stopped either. So that's where we'll end up. So there's some uh, possible options everyone for the responder. So the way to remember uh, responding to a uh, reverse is that whenever you as a responder return or uh, to one of partner's suits, so you either, uh, you bid one of their suits at the three level, if partner has bid diamonds and hearts, and you bid either three diamonds or three hearts, you're saying, partner, I've got a minimum hand. Uh, if you repeat your own suit, you're saying to partner, partner, I've got a minimum hand and six cards there. If you bid two no trump, you are also showing a minimum hand and saying, I've got a stopper in the, in the unbid suit, but I don't particularly like either of your suits. All of those bids are minimum bids. How do you go to game? Well, you go to game by either jumping uh, in a suit, in your suit, or uh, you simply bid game by bidding three no trump, or you use fourth suit forcing. Let's look at what you, uh, again, like I've just covered now, I spoke about what you do with weak hands. Partner opened a club, you bid a heart, partner bid two diamonds, which was a reverse, and you bid two hearts, showing a minimum. Example 11, partner opened a diamond, and you bid a spade, partner bid two hearts, you'd go back to three diamonds on this hand, which simply shows a minimum hand uh, and about six or five to seven points. Now, reverses also apply uh, for the responder just as much as they apply for the opener. So if you're the responder, anytime you bid the suits in ascending order, that is you go up, you are promising a reverse as the responder and reverses as the responder don't require 16 points. They require simply enough points to say to partner, we're going to game. Yep. So in this option, a diamond, a heart, two diamonds, two spades, we've gone up, we've gone, we've ascended in the suits, we've got the hearts up to spades as the responder, and we've gone up a level, and that said to partner, partner, uh, I've got enough points uh, for game. I'm showing you five hearts and four spades. 
And let's look at the last subject. Helen asked, alluded to this earlier, and she asked about six five shapes. So a six five shape for me can be opened on hands with as little as nine high card points. Now, uh, the way I like to judge these hands or um, decide whether I'm going to uh, upgrade this hand to be good enough to open at the one level or not is dependent upon the number of losers in the hand. So I will have a, a full lesson on, on this subject of opening the bidding, upgrading and downgrading later on. Here, what we've got is that we've got a hand with a 6-5 shape and we've only got 13 high card points. So if we were to open a club on this hand and have partner respond one spade, of course with a 6-5, the whole idea of opening the hand is to make sure that we try to get our shape across to a partner. So on this particular hand, I would need to bid two hearts, but that would be a reverse because it's above two clubs, one club, uh, and it's above two clubs, whilst I've bid two hearts. So one club, one spade, two hearts. Above two clubs equals a reverse, equals five or more clubs, four or more hearts, and 16 or more points. Whoops, I don't have the 16 points. But I do have a hand that is good enough in playing strength to decide whether I'm going to reverse or not. So this is the criteria. You should open any six five with six losers or less, yes? And you can reverse with that six five if needed with three or four losers only. Well, let's count our losers on this hand. There's one in spades, there's one in hearts, one in diamonds and one in clubs. Terry's asked the question, I always wonder if it reverses restricts from showing shape as you often have to fudge the second bit if you don't have 16. It does, but you'll see from the examples that I've given Terry that it, it doesn't, um, uh, you don't fudge your shape too much. If, for example, this hand was had an extra loser, this one's got four now, and as I said, with six or five losers, you wouldn't reverse. With four or three losers, your hand is good enough to reverse. This has four losers. Therefore, I'm good enough to bid two hearts. Over partner's next bid, I'm going to bid three hearts. And partner will know that I've got a six, five shape. And at most, three losers or four losers in my hand. That's a, that's a lot of information. So you can reverse with less than 16 points, but you need to make up for it with the extra shape. Yeah. Okay, I've got some hands that I've prepared earlier. I'm just going to change um, our sharing and put in a new share here. Now I'm going to share with our screen. Okay, and I've prepared these hands earlier, everyone. So, I might have had an uh, error in the notes there. Ah, oh, yes, everyone. Sorry, thanks, Gail, you pick, picked that up. I proofread these very badly, didn't I? Uh, about 11 o'clock last night. Uh, here, uh, you'll see that in the last example, example 12, if you could adjust the notes, the rebid should have been two hearts, not uh, uh, two spades. So example 12, two hearts, and then bid hearts again on the next round. Let's have a look at these example hands. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, let's have a look at these example hands here. Now, your, your self, your dealer, and you have to decide with this 5-4 shape um, uh, what you're going to rebid if partner's likely uh, uh, response comes of one spade. So here, uh, I can afford to rebid two hearts. Why? Because that's above my barrier of, of diamonds. So hearts would be above two diamonds, which means my hand, I would be reversing, and I have sufficient values to reverse. I've got 6, 6, 12, 16 high card points. Yep. Try not to fudge too much on reverses, everyone, especially with five, four shapes. 16 points is 16 points. With a uh, greater shape, you may be able to fudge a bit, like I'm suggesting with a six, five, or even a six, four, you might fudge one point. So in this hand, I'm going to open a diamond, partner responds one spade, and I'm reversing to two hearts. Partner's next bid is three diamonds. So they're saying to me, I'm minimum partner. I've got a minimum hand. I only have about, you know, six points, six or seven points, maybe even a, you know, a, a, 
a five point hand that I like the look of to respond initially. So I'm saying I don't want to go any further on this hand. So they're signing off in three diamonds. Do you have anything extra? The answer is no. What I might do everyone is uh, perhaps open the microphones here. And if anyone has something that they'd like to uh, 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 add, then please unmute yourself. I don't, uh, my suggestion is that you can still type questions, uh, but uh, let's, if you'd like to um, uh, comment or, or put in something that you think is relevant to the hand, uh, please do. So here's the hand, we're playing in three diamonds and West has to make an opening lead. What would be the opening lead on this particular hand? Well, clubs is the unbid suit and with a, uh, uh, a sequence like this, it certainly seems to me to be uh, to be the best choice. So I think I'd be leading the queen of clubs on this hand. Yes? So let's look at the hand and, and hold and let's play the hand. Okay. So I'm just getting used to my new software. Trick one. Have a look at all four hands, by the way. There we go. Move our chat to the side. Okay, there's all the four hands, everyone. And that trick one, the queen of clubs was led. Dummy played the two. East, from two cards, including the king here, decided to play the king on top of the queen. Now, the reason for that is because East can see that they would be doing what we call unblocking the club suit. So uh, if partner holds the, the jack and the 10, which is a good chance, uh, they would be, by keeping the king by itself, they'd be blocking up the club suit and perhaps stopping partner from winning the second and the third round of the club. That's why they contributed the king here. Uh, on the next, and, and now as declarer, if you want to have a look at the two hands by themselves, what would be our line of of play, yeah? Lena's just asked a question, I thought reverses were 100% forcing, they are 100% forcing, Lena, but uh, they're not forcing to gain, yeah? They're, for, they're, they're forcing simply to uh, uh, the next level that is in one of partner's suits or to no trump, yep. So they're not forcing to gain, they're forcing for a round. Okay, so you've won the ace of clubs. What's your line of play? Well, first thing I'm gonna say is I'm glad I'm not in three no trump on this hand. Because in three no trump, I think the defense, uh, I might have taken five diamonds and a club is six, and two hearts if the finesse is right, that's eight, but I cannot see a ninth trick from anywhere. Now, I'm in three diamonds and happy to be in three diamonds on this hand. The losers that I've got in my hand, I can hardly cover them in dummy, with the exception of this. The ace queen of hearts here has the doubleton heart over there. If I can start trumping some hearts in dummy, then uh, I might be able to uh, cross trump this hand and get to at least nine or even 10 tricks, depending on where the king of hearts is. So if I'm going to cross trump, let's set up the cross trump. Let's play a spade, uh, a spade on the next trick. We play a spade and West comes up with the king, okay? West continues on to the club winner. And then West simply plays a third club winner. Now, all of our clubs are gone and West and Dummy are the only ones left with clubs. So let's see what West does next. I think West is probably onto the fact that I'm thinking of cross trumping this hand. I'm thinking of roughing hearts and Dummy and spades in my hand. So, uh, I reckon West will probably play a trump next, and they do. Why did I play the ace? The reason I played the ace, everyone, is because I wanted that entry to dummy to play a heart next to take the finesse of the queen. So that's why I hopped with the ace and dummy. And I want, if everything's perfect on this hand, I want to be able to trump two losing hearts here with my two trumps in dummy, the two baby trumps. So I've taken the ace of trumps and dummy. Next, I've led a heart, finesse the queen, and it's one. Well, this is good news. I think we're 
we're looking good from here, although that nine of diamonds is a threatening card out against me. I've, the opponents have a total of seven hearts. And now the ace of hearts is one. Next, okay, we've been able to trump the third round of hearts and dummy. That's lovely. So we've still got this losing heart, but we've still got a trump here. So how about we cross back to our hand by trumping a spade? We do that. And now let's see if the, if, uh, the person who, who holds uh, no more hearts has the nine of diamonds or not. It might be our lucky day if we play a heart. Brilliant. So the person here over here doesn't hold the nine of diamonds, otherwise they would have over-trumped. And now we've got the last three tricks, everyone. So that's not a bad result, I think. A bad, uh, good result. We're actually making 10 tricks on the hand, which I think is a fabulous effort. So let's move on to our next hand here. Our next hand here. Okay, this time we're the responder, and I want to have a look at the option as the responder. Partner's opened one club, you've responded one spade, uh, and partner has bid two hearts. Now, with 10 high card points, four cards in hearts, yes, and a singleton, that's plenty of points per game. I'm not going to bid three hearts, I'm actually going to raise to four hearts on the hand. I raise to four hearts on the hand, and partner, because partner may pass my three heart bid, so we land in four hearts. Let's have a look at uh, the west hand, and choose an opening lead. Well, the opponents have bid clubs, spades, and hearts. Often the, uh, uh, the unbid suit is a good place to start. So I think we are going to start with a diamond. So let's play this hand. Uh, West leads the jack of diamonds. Now, let's have a look at all of the cards here, everyone. Okay, so. If you look at the hand from Declarer's perspective, why did I win? This is like Avril's just asking a question here. Can I open the cards up? Pardon me. Picture of the cards so you can all see. There we are. Avril's asked a question with five hearts and five diamonds and 16 points. Do you reverse? No, you don't, Avril. Good question, though. So, everyone, did you hear that question? Five hearts and five diamonds, do you reverse? No. With five five shapes, you never reverse. You always open the higher ranking suit. Uh, by opening the lower ranking suit and then bidding the higher ranking suit second, quite often you can show the unbalanced shape of the hands or the disparity between the two suits. Either they are five four or they may later be six five. So with a five five shape, always, always, irrespective of the number of points you have, open the higher ranking suit. So back to the first um, uh, trick. So we go previous, previous trick here. Here they've led a low diamond and we've decided to win with the king in dummy. Why is that? Well, that's because I think I need to get this club suit going here, everyone. I need to get the club suit going in order for us to uh, be able to uh, set up a club uh, with the king or the queen losing to the ace. Might be our, our, our lucky day with the ace of clubs on side. I also may want to try and trump a few clubs in dummy in case the suit is breaking four and three. If that's the case, then I can set up the fifth round of the suit. So that's what I want to do. I want to start with the clubs and I want to lead towards the king queen. That's why I won the king of diamonds in dummy. So let's play a club at trick two. Club at trick two, and the king loses to the ace. Okay, so it's not exactly you know uh, our lucky day, but it's still a, it's still a, a good chance because if we can trump a couple of clubs in, in in dummy over here, we might just be able to set up the fifth club and simply lose a spade in the end. So West leads the ace of clubs, and West plays what another diamond. So now we're in hand. This is good. Should I play the queen of clubs next, everyone? The answer to that is no. Don't run the risk of playing a, a, a winner, A, that could be roughed. This is an example of, is not an example of when I think it's going to be roughed. But what I think I want to do is not allow um, East the chance to over rough too many clubs. Because remember, my heart spots and dummy are quite small. 
We played one round of clubs. That's four gone. There's four in our hand. There's five left in the opponent's hand. Hopefully the queen will take care of two, which brings the tally to three left, which means if they're two and one, if I rough both small clubs and dummy, the seven of clubs will become a winner. So let's try that line of play. We play a low club and dummy roughs low. Well, this is good news. So far, so good. So I now need to get back to my hand. Uh, should I trump a diamond? If I do that, then I'll be actually shortening trumps in both hands. And if I can avoid that, uh, especially when I, I want to enjoy the fifth club, then I should avoid that. So the best way here is to probably get back to hand via a trump. So that's what we're going to do. See those trump spots, the ace, king, queen, jack, ten? They're all good cards because they're all going to be high. And next, I'm going to rough another club in dummy. But I can afford with only three cards out to trump, especially if they're, if they're breaking 2-1 here. The queen will take care of two. The seven will be, or the six will be trumped in dummy. I don't think I'm going to run the risk of trumping it low with the five, lest I get over trumped. I can afford the king. So let's try it. Yep, so that was good news. We, we, uh, East followed suit anyhow, so they weren't going to over trump. But it could, have, it could have been a bit um, nasty if they did. Okay, let's follow on. Now, ah, that was good news. Trumps broke 4-1. If we had trumped a diamond back to our hand uh, uh, with trumps 4-1, now East would have one trump more than us. Let's continue. We'll draw trumps. One more round of trumps. And now we're going to play our winning clubs, the Queen, takes the 10, which is the last club. And then the seven is a winner. And then we follow up with a spade to the ace and give the opponents the last trick with the 10 of spades, or the queen of spades. So that means that we took 11 tricks. Not a bad result. Two more to go. Okay. Again, we're the, uh, we are the responder here. Partner opens a club. You respond one heart. Partner bids two diamonds, and uh, you bid with this particular hand. I'm not sure where to go with this hand. If I bid three diamonds, partner will pass. If I commit to five diamonds, when three no trump could be the right spot. So plus, partner might have three cards and hearts. We never know. So with this particular hand, it's perfect for a fourth suit forcing bid of two spades. Partner bids two no trump. Promising a stopper in the spade suit. Well, that's good. Your queen will be helpful. So that's where we're going to head. We're going to raise to three no trump. So uh, let's have a look at the opening leader. The opening leader, the opponents are bid clubs, hearts, and diamonds naturally. Two spades is fourth suit forcing. So we're going to lead a low spade. Let's have a look at the... Okay, let's look at the first trick. The Claire and dummy. Why did I play the queen? The reason I played the queen was in case West has led away from the ace. If you played low and dummy, you would have left the queen by itself. If you played low and dummy, East would have contributed probably the 10 or the jack. Remember, West didn't lead either the jack or the 10, which means they won't have uh, an a, a internal sequence, ace, jack, 10. They've led a low one. So one of the jack or 10 will be here. If we had played low, uh, the jack or the 10 would have forced the king, and then the ace would have dropped the queen. That's why we hopped up with the queen here in dummy. That means we've got the king and the nine left sitting here precariously under the ace jack or ace 10 in the west hand. That means that if we're ever going to lose the lead on this hand, we have to make sure we don't lose it to east, lest east push a card through the king nine and here in spades. So my aim is to use the entries in dummy to perhaps set up the suit that needs setting up. And which one's that? Well, it's not hearts. We've no. got five and one, that's six. It's not spades, of course. Diamonds are already set up. I, I'll say this again and again and again in hands where you play no trumps. Quite often, it's a good idea, unless you've got uh, 
no other chance and you want to put pressure on the opponents, it's a good idea to not play out uh, all of the winners in a side suit straight away uh, because you can utilize them for entries back and forth. Well, I want to go across to dummy and I want to start finessing in clubs. So that's my plan. I'm going to play a low diamond across. Oh, sorry, we're already in dummy, pardon me. So I'm in dummy and I play a low club and I finesse the nine. Why did I finesse the nine? Well, I'm going to finesse twice on this hand. So if I'm going to finesse twice on this hand, the holding that can help me the most is a holding which is probably going to be of four cards here in the east hand. Four to the king, I can never pick it up without giving east the lead with extra club tricks. Four to the jack, I can pick it up uh, because eventually I will finesse the nine and the ten twice. Watch what happens. When I do finesse the nine, it loses to the king. That's a very good sign. Now West has to continue on with a card. They're confident you've got the king, or because otherwise partner probably would have played the king on the first round. So they're going to make a neutral switch, and they switch to the ace of hearts. Well, you're in dummy. What next? Another club finesse. Ah, this is fantastic. Eight clubs have gone. The king has dropped. You've got three here. That means that's 11. And that's only the jack outstanding against you. That means all of your clubs are high. Let's start cashing out some tricks, everyone. Queen of clubs drops the jack. Five of clubs, discarding a spade. Now we'll run our lovely diamond suit. All winners here, all we're doing is cashing out tricks here, everyone. So I, I'm sorry if that's gotten a little bit quick, but we're just cashing our four diamond winners. Then we cash our king of hearts, and then we give our opponents the last trick. Yep, that's still 11 tricks. I think, again, an, uh, another good result, another good result, because we were able to uh, finesse in clubs twice. And if you think about this hand, uh, uh, the, uh, the best holding for us was jack to three club, four clubs here, or jack to three clubs. With king of clubs here, uh, we wouldn't have been able to pick up as many tricks as we did. So let's look at our last hand here, our last hand here. Now, here's one of those wonderful six, five shapes. So we've only got in high card points, 13, seven and six is 13, but uh, we've got a six, five shape. Now, our, we've got a low 6-5, so the 6-card suit is lower ranking compared to the 5-card suit. How many losers do we have? We have to decide if we've got 3 or 4 losers, then we'll be good enough to reverse. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, for those who are not used to uh, uh, losing trick count, next week I'm giving a full lesson on losing trick count, how you evaluate losers, or how you count them, and how you evaluate them in the auction. It's a, it's a very interesting lesson. Kerry's asked a quick question here. Yes, Kerry, is there somewhere on BBO where you can practice a particular convention such as reverses? Uh, no, there's not. I'm sorry, Kerry. No, they don't, I don't think they have those. They might have them occasionally pop up. So we start off with a diamond, especially expecting to bid hearts twice. Partner bids one spade, and you bid two hearts, reversing. Partner bids two spades here, which is promising what? Let's have a look at the, what they promised. Six spades and five to seven high card points. Okay, well, I'm still not going to stop me bidding out my shape. I've only got four losers. Well, I'm going to bid three hearts here. So now partner knows that's five hearts, six diamonds, three or four losers. So partner, in turn, decides to raise to gain. So that's partner's hand. Opposite my six, five, partner decided with three card heart support and a singleton. That was good enough. Uh, to raise to four hearts, and I concur. Okay, let's have a look at selecting all the four hands. So, okay, let's have a look at this hand from partner's perspective. So, to Clara, on the opening lead to the ace. Well, hopefully you're going to get in soon, and the whole idea on a hand like this is to make sure we set up our diamond suit. So those hearts are very important in dummy, to make sure that we set up the diamonds. And uh, that's how you should be thinking uh, the moment you gain the lead. So let's 
see what the opponents play next. They play another club and you trump in with the seven of hearts. So they're reducing your trump holding already, which is probably good defense. So how many diamonds against you? Queen Jack to six. Hopefully the ace and the king can take care of four of those six diamonds. And then hopefully we can trump two of the others in dummy. This is not dissimilar to the first example we had today. So that's our plan. Our plan is to take the ace of diamonds, not the king on the next round, but simply a low one to trump. So let's try ace of diamonds here. Everyone follows. Four diamonds left in the opponent's hand. Let's see if we can trump a low one and grab another two. So we're going to trump another one. Yep, so now there's only two diamonds left in the opponent's hand. The king could take care of both of them, but the odds are that they're probably both in one hand. So we need to get back to our hand to trump one more of those uh, diamonds and dummies. So how do we get back to our hand? Well, we should try and trump a club back to our hand. And that's what we do. Now we're running a little bit of risk here if trumps don't break 3-2, but you know, it's not a perfect world. Do we play the king of diamonds or do we play a low diamond? And when we play a low diamond, we should, do we trump with the ace or the six? Well, there's two reasons to trump with the ace. One, uh, it won't be over trumped. And two, if you trump with the ace, it'll allow you the six to play back to the king, queen, jack. So we'll essentially unblock the trump suit. So that's what we're going to do. See, we've trumped here with the ace. And East would have over-trumped. So a good idea. We play a low heart back to the Jack. Draw all of the opponent's trumps. And now there's only one diamond left out against us. So the King draws the Jack, the 10 and the eight, both winners. And we watch the opponent's Ace and King of Spades crash on the last trick. Such a satisfying feeling. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, again, like I said, we will email a video of this lesson to you. Now, don't forget on Sunday at 1:30 uh, on BBO, Ron Klinger and I are playing a challenge match on, at 1:30 on BBO. Look for my name and simply just click on my name, and you can go to the table and you can give us us playing. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, is there daylight saving this weekend? Anyway, watch out if there is. So uh, you can click on my name, and my name, BBO name is M Malamphy. M M U L L A M P H Y. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on Monday. I'll email you through the uh, uh, the list of lessons for next week. Thanks, everyone.